in a world where zombies, ghosts, serial killers, and vampires all exist. It's Nico, Brian, Mike, and Dustin, and they are all that stand between you and the films that could end the world. Welcome to the Don't Go Out There Horror Movie Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Don't Go Out There Horror Movie Review Podcast. Just want to thank all our fans and listeners. Really appreciate all the support. You guys are awesome. Uh, before we get into tonight's legendary blood re- donor review, I just want to give a quick shout out to our website, don'tgooutthere.com. Uh, everything about this podcast is on our website. You know, we've got all of our episodes and interviews. If you want to go go back and listen to our old episodes or our new ones, uh, we've got our store on there. You know, we just uploaded some new merch uh, and some new t-shirts. They're awesome. And we also got Shan's Etsy page attached as well. Uh, she makes awesome tumblers. She's selling them like crazy, so definitely go check those out. Uh, we also have all our links, all of our social media on there, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Go follow us, like us, subscribe us, all that good stuff. Uh, we love our fans. We love interacting with you all. And, you know, give us positive, negative feedback, whatever uh, you have for us. But we just love interacting with you. Uh, it helps us grow and become better. And uh, the last thing I'm going to shout out before we get into the, the film review is our Patreon, what we call Blood Donors. We have two different kinds. We have the traditional monthly reoccurring kind. Big help to us. It helps us pay for our site Absolutely. hosting. helps us pay for our SoundCloud, uh, what we record our podcast on. It helps me pay for you know the software I use to make our YouTube videos. None of this stuff is free. None of the money goes in our pockets directly. It just goes directly back into the podcast so we can make a good product for you guys. And we also have one-time donations if you have, you know, films that you love and you want us to review, et cetera, et cetera. But tonight is Sarah Irwin, legendary blood donor. Uh, It's her pick. And uh, Sarah, you want to announce your pick and why you picked it? Okay, so uh, my pick is the movie Rubber. Um, I chose it because it is honestly one of my favorite movies. I know that sounds crazy, Um, but my best friend (laughs) introduced it to me um we've been watching weird horror movies since we were very very young probably shouldn't but we did and um yeah so she wanted me to watch it and i've probably seen the movie including today uh about 20 times what yeah wow all right i'll go next uh sarah i just want to say Thank you for being a blood donor. Uh, he starts off with that. Don't really have much great to say about the movie, honestly. Um, I kind of get what the director was trying to do, but that doesn't really make it much better, in my opinion, when you're trying to send a message, even if it doesn't. If it don't hit for me, it don't hit for me. But I respect it has a cult following, and it's a cult classic. Uh, whatever horror fans want to call it with this movie, I'm just really not a part of it. But, I mean, I've got a few positives, but I really just am not a big fan of it. But I appreciate you being a blood donor and coming on our show and supporting us. That that does mean a lot to me. And I'm glad that you wanted to come on our show to review it. Uh, Mike, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. So, okay. Uh, I just want to start off by saying I love that this genre has the ability where you can just like what you like unabashedly and you should feel the way that you feel about the movies you like i i don't think i i know we did a guilty pleasure month but i i've tried to get rid of that term for my vernacular uh because i think that at the end of the day you like what you like and you should hold on to those things i feel like those things make us better that's what we like so i did want to start off by saying i'm glad that sarah likes this movie i'm glad this movie has a following i'm not in that following <laughs> Uh, look, here's what I'll say. This movie has a few good things. I want to start off positive. I have three good things wrote down, but I have about, I have about 16 things written. So, um, (laughs) that lets you know where I am. Uh, I don't think this movie is very good. This movie frustrated me a lot of times while watching it. Uh, I, there's a point about halfway through where I'm waiting on something to happen. Uh, and I'm mad because nothing's happening. Um, it's it. I I get the message. I do. I don't think it lands with me. I don't think it hits. Um, 
it just doesn't work in my opinion. I'll be honest. I rated Thanks Killing really low, the lowest rating I've ever given. And I would probably pop in Thanks Killing before I'd pop this back in. Because um, at least the bird says something like gobble gobble, motherfucker. Uh, we don't have any kind of humor in this one. And so I I don't know. It was not for it's not for me, but I appreciate that someone wants to come on and defend thy honor because I got movies like that. I, I I'm un- you wait till we review Jason X and I have to defend thy honor on that one. So I completely understand where you're coming from, but uh, I just can't I can't stand in the battle with you with my sword and shield. I just can't do it. I I apologize, but I do appreciate you coming on and uh, please don't take this too seriously. But I'm about to rip this movie apart the way that the tire rip people's heads off. Um, um, I, I want to start by saying that, um, Sarah, you, you and your husband are, are great people and I really appreciate your support for this show. I have a lot of fun jousting with Sean on Twitter. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I do too. you know, I thought that he had bad taste in movies. Um, <laughs> he does. No, well, those two things are not no, mutually know, exclusive. He he Honestly, does. I, I hey, he did pick Spencer though. That was a good pick. But when when we when I was I've been thinking about this all day, and the first thing I wanted to ask you, you already answered. The first thing I want to ask you when we started this review is, do you actually like like this movie, or do you just think this movie is one of those like, ha ha? I've seen this movie. I want them to suffer too. But you answered it. You've seen this movie twenty times. I, you know what? That's awesome. Because you listen, I enjoy a movie that Mike hates, like hates with a capital H. It's called Ready to Rumble, and it's a Abby it's a talks, comedy talks, about man. professional wrestling, which we both <laughs> wow. love professional wrestling. We both wow. love comedies, but um, he hates that movie. So I get it. Like everybody likes what they like. It's terrible. I watched this movie one time, and <laughs> honestly. <laughs> 82 minutes has never felt longer in my entire life. I I, I, I tried to like, I, you know, when I read about it, I tried to go into it thinking like, okay, take it for what it is. Like there's a movie called Velocipaster. And like, you know what you're going into when you see that movie. There's, there's Sharknado's got like six sequels. You know what you're getting into when you watch that movie. But this movie, it's something. Um, respectfully, it's not my cup of tea. And... I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm actually anxious. This may be the first time in the history of us doing the blood donor thing that I'm act- literally anxious to hear what you say about the scene by scene breakdown, because I want to, I want to hear this movie from the perspective of someone that enjoys it. Sean came on here and made us do color out of space. And I was like, God, this movie sucks, but I didn't care what he had to say. Cause I hated it that much. This movie, I'm genuinely confused and concerned about why you love this movie so i'm i'm really excited to hear what you say and i'm excited to do this episode i am too gotta defend it gotta stand in the paint for it that's good because sean just let us poop all over colorado space so i'm yeah and i'm curious and he laughed the whole time so i was like okay so he even sees how ridiculous this is i'm i'm anxious for this one oh he knew that (laughs) He knew that going into it uh, because I watched it once with him and said, I'm not watching this again. Like, I'm not going to help you. I'm not, okay. Like, this is it. This is the one time I'm going to watch okay. it with you. So, so, you. so he like he knew he was like, the guys are going to hate this and it's going to be terrible. amazing. And so it's you're a person of reason is what I'm hearing. Ridiculous. You agree with us on color out of space. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so that makes me even more oh, excited yeah. about this scene by scene. Oh, for Ever- sure. Everyone's got the movies they like, even when other people hate them. That's 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 true. Dustin hates Jason X. I like Jason X. That's Ready to Rumble is thing. such a better movie than Titanic. Go ahead, Nico. It's now you now you. I have text proof that you like Titanic. Text I do, but proof. I, that my statement still and Pearl Harbor. So suck stands. it. <laughs> Any more opening thoughts? Where you just jump into the scene by scene. All right, let's do it. The film starts with a shot of some lined up chairs in a desert. We now see the accountant holding several pairs of binoculars. A black car runs over all these chairs slowly. Lieutenant Chad exits the trunk and hands the other officer his shades. Chad now gives an opening monologue. He asks several questions, then answers them with no reason. Why is E.T. Brown 
Why don't we see characters use the bathroom in Texas Chainsaw Massacre and more questions? All great films with no exception. They all have questions with no reason. Why do some people like sausage and why do some not like it? No reason. The film we're about to see is an homage to no reason. He gets back in the trunk and the car drives away. We now see he was talking to a group of people. The accountant hands out the binoculars to them. He has them turn around and they all look into the desert and he rides away on his bike. The son tells his dad he's bored quickly. Dad says it's going to pick up. Just be patient. I hope it's not a silent film. We now see a bunch of garbage in the opening credits roll. Title card. Camera pans down to this tire submerged into the ground. It begins to move around and it like, stands up now. Cheery music plays as the tire begins to roll around. It stops when it rolls up on an empty water bottle. It runs it over and squishes it. Now it rolls up on a scorpion and kills it, Ethan Hawke style from Sinister. Back to rolling around and it gets to a beer bottle. It spins itself over and over on it, causing no damage. Robert, <laughs> the tire's name is Rob. Robert gets pissed <laughs> and shakes using his psychic powers, blowing the bottle up. They comment about what the tire just did. The son says it seems like it has psychokinetic powers. The teenage girls ask him to stop talking. And I'm not just, I hope this doesn't come across on, but her IMDb name is the black woman tells him to stop the filming. It's piracy back to rolling through the desert. And Robert gets to an old rusty can. Now it uses its psychic powers to explode the can more rolling through the desert. And the tire gets to a tree and collapses on its side at nighttime. The next morning, the tire gets back up and rolls off. The accountant is back to the crowd who fell asleep in the desert. He's rummaging their items and taking some of their money. He starts to wake them up aggressively saying it's starting again. Some say they didn't sleep well. Some request coffee and toast. Son tells dad he's hungry. They're watching the tire again and it rolls up on a puddle and it uses its power to explode a bunny rabbit. Upbeat music plays as the tire rolls on some more. The tire makes it to the road and we see a young girl drive past it. It uses its power and shuts the car down. She can't get the car to crank back up. The tire rolls towards her now and we see this truck driver not paying attention and he runs the tire over and passes the girl. She gets her car crunk back up and she drives away. The tire blows up an innocent bird now in frustration. The truck driver is at a gas station filling up and the girl drives past him and shoots him the finger. The truck driver uses the payphone to no success as the tire rolls up to the gas station. He gets back in his truck and stares at the tire. The tire shakes using its power to explode his head. The crowd is in shock. Tire is back on the road and we see a cop car speed past it in the opposite direction. And I think that's the most ridiculous opening scene by scene I've ever read. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay. So I'm going to start with the positives. Here we go. I actually like the – stop me if you've heard me say this word before. The cinematography, not bad. I like the – yep. I like the way it's shot. I think this is a – I think this actually, for what it is, is a well-shot movie for the most part. Um, so I'm going to give credit where credit's due. I, I think the setting is cool. They're in the middle of the desert. I think it plays well. Um, and I'll be honest, some of the music in this movie fucking slaps, man. There's some good little bops in here. So big positives on those. I think it kind of made me when you see the setting and the music, you're kind of like, okay, this could get interesting. At least it has, uh, you know, it has me a little bit. Then it's not very interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, I, I, the whole spectator thing is a little odd to me. Uh, the break in the third wall, kind of talking to us, the no reason thing. I get, again, I get what they're saying. I just don't think it worked with me. Uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just didn't land with me that well. Um, and all the chairs, like, why are we running over the chairs? Like, I'm not really sure what that's about. I guess it's to get everybody to lay down or stand or be really tired or whatever. I don't know. Uh, thought that was a little random. Um, look, 40-ish minutes of this movie is a tire rolling through the sand. <laughs> so I don't, there's not a lot of notes that I could take. But a few things I will say, again, I think the, when we finally get some kills, they're pretty cool. Uh, so there's a, uh, you know, right here you get the guy's head that blows up at the gas station. That's pretty cool. Uh, also what year does this movie take place in to where he has to use a fucking pay phone? That makes no sense to me. I know they're in the middle of nowhere, but come on, my man got to have 
some kind of cellular device or flip phone or something. I don't know. Uh, car phone. I don't fucking know. Anyway, um, I thought that was a little random, but it, it, it doesn't really occur to me that we're watching a killer tire until later in the film. This opening set of scenes, it, it's not something that like registers with me. I just kind of take it as like this weird mix mash of like different horror elements with like an old Western atmosphere. <laughs> like, I don't know how to quite explain it. The, I will say the spectators are, here's the problem with the spectators. I don't mind the idea of somebody watching this through binoculars like it's a movie. I think that's interesting. They're so poorly written. The dialogue here is awful between these people. It is so bad. It's cringy. And maybe it's like that on purpose. And if that's the case, boy, did they ever accomplish their goal. I just think none of the actors, and look, I'm not an actor. I'm never going to be an actor. I can't teach anyone how to act. But I can tell when acting is bad and the acting in that crowd of people is rough, rough. And so um, it's it's up. <laughs> look, there are some good things, like I said at the top. But as far as just like our normal scene by scene, it was hard to really have anything because it's a tire rolling through the dirt for about 12 minutes of the opening here. Uh, the other stuff's filled with an animal exploding, which I think looks good. I think the rabbit looks good. I think the bird looks good. I think the man's head exploding looks good. Um, I just think it's kind of when I sit back and think about how they died, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a tire that vibrates and then people blow up like it's it, it's it's i don't know how to I, I don't know the right word for it but um I, I tried to start off with some positives but man this first i don't know what is this 25 minutes i'm not thrilled i'm not thrilled that i'm watching it that's all i'm good i'm not i'm not a happy camper the first set of scenes but i did think premise wise started out okay just kind of faltered off here towards the end okay so um I would just like to say real quick before I actually get into the scenes, there are two ways that you can interpret this movie. You can either enjoy the aspect of it just being a weird killer tire, or you can think about, um, I actually watched an interview with the uh, director and the movie before this one was a complete flop. Not saying that this one wasn't a flop. But um, basically he had decided that he was angry with the film industry. And so he wanted to show how the film industry actually is using a killer tire. So you can kind of decide um, how to interpret that. Um, but in this first, you know, set of scenes, you can actually see how Robert the Tire actually has character growth because he starts off with a, um, with rolling over a water bottle. Cause I mean, everyone has rolled over a water bottle with their car. I mean, or like a soda can or whatever. So he starts off with that. And then he escalates. And as he gets angrier, he goes to bigger and bigger things. And I think that's actually really interesting um, because, I mean, you wouldn't think that a tire could have character growth, but he does. And I will say that I also love the cinematography, which the director did himself as well. He also did all the editing for the movie. Um and the music is really good. Um, I think all that I really had, the, I agree with um, the way that the people are talking to each other. Like the lines are just not good. Uh, but Lieutenant Chad, his opening scene of talking to them, I really, really enjoy that. I just think it's fun. Um, I think it's hilarious how he just gets out of the trunk of the car and then gets back in the trunk of the car to drive away. I just think that's hysterical. Well, um, I can certainly see 
<laughs> you, what are you doing? You're tiptoeing. Just do I, it. I mean, I get it. Okay, I get it. How he was frustrated with the film industry, blah blah blah. But you know, maybe make better movies. This one, Mike's going to get into the budget and what it, what the box office did. Like this was not a success either. So, okay. My thing is, so I asked y'all in our group chat, why, why are all these chairs set up here and why do they fall over so easily? When the t- the like the car tapped the chair and they just fall apart, and one of you, I think it might have been Brian, might have been Nico, I don't know. Someone said no reason, and then I was like, when I heard the no reason line when he's giving his little you know monologue, that doesn't make it any better to me. That doesn't make it any better. You don't, you know, no, no, any kind of movie. Why does Jason Voorhees want to kill all these camp counselors? No reason. Bullshit. There is a reason. You want to think about these things. You want to piece the things together. You want to piece the puzzle together and think about what makes things tick. Why doesn't people like sausage? You know, some people have a religious thing against pork. That is a reason. Don't tell me no reason. Um, I don't. I agree with you, Mike. The, the premise of the people watching a film in real time with binoculars, like the spectators watching it happen, that's a little weird to me. Uh, it didn't really hit. I I kind of, I think it could be a good premise. It could be a good premise. Right. That's what I was saying. It's interesting. I just don't think they stick yeah. the landing because the dialogue yeah, the dialogue's is terrible. bad. And I, I told, oh, I was, that's what I was scrolling here trying to find. I was like, uh, oh, I said, quote, this is some great dialogue. Let me tell you. <laughs> that's what I texted y'all at 836 last night when I was watching this opening set of scenes. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, okay, we get to watch the tire coming to life and digging itself out of the dirt and everything. And at first, you know, and honestly, hats off to a couple of things. Okay, Mike, you said it. The cinematography is good. I like how this movie shot, to be honest with you. I like the score. The soundtrack is great. I also really appreciate the fact that most of this movie, almost all of this movie was done with real uh, practical effects and hardly any CGI was used. That's incredible. But the tire having to have an orgasm to kill people with its, uh, you know, with brain powers. What? This thing is sitting there shaking and quaking and people just explode. What, what are we doing here? What? I'm sorry. Um, we didn't get a reason as to why the tire has these powers to be able to shake and its inner walls. I think this is a sexual metaphor, if I'm being honest with you. I didn't feel comfortable watching this tire shake like that. When you see a rubber shaking and things exploding, I don't know. I get uncomfortable. But I, we didn't get an answer as to why the tire got these powers. But then every time I started to think, why does the tire have these powers? I kept saying to myself, no reason. And I hated it even more. No. No reason is not acceptable, in my opinion. And also, like, the accountant going around and stealing things from the people while they're sleeping. I wanted a bigger payoff from that. Like, I I know what we get to, and we understand that these people are just there to serve a purpose. But, uh, I don't know. I wanted someone to kick his ass, I guess. If you send him picking my pockets while I'm trying to sleep with my kid, I don't know. Um, Not a spectacular opening set of scenes. And I'll leave it at that. Go ahead. All right. The tire pulls up to an old rundown motel and it sees the girl's car. He rolls to room 15 and looks in the open front door. Sheila gets undressed and into the shower. The onlookers are talking about her her ass and boobs. The black woman asks if they think the tire is going to get laid. The teenagers are complaining they talk too much. The tire watches her shower and dry off. She realizes her door is open and, and slams it finally. She leaves her mom a voicemail and lays on the bed. The tire has its own room now watching an exercise tape. The film buffs lay down and ask the man in the wheelchair to let them know if anything happens. The son walks up with a rabbit carcass and they say it's fake. Tyre is watching a tiki party now. Sheila can't sleep due to the loud TV next door. The accountant spit shines his shoes and does some weird walking thing in front of the mirror when his phone rings. He calls the, he calls the other caller master as we see a turkey in the room. He says he's going to do it tomorrow. The accountant opens a briefcase and takes some knives out, and we hear the turkey gobbling. Next morning, we get some desert shots, and the cleaning lady asks the accountant if she can clean his room as he walks off with his bike. 
the man in the wheelchair watches on as the accountant shows up who yells food and he drops a cooked turkey on the ground. They all begin to devour it, all except the man in the wheelchair. He calls them animals. Cleaning lady knocks on room 16 and goes inside. She turns the TV off and begins to clean. She hears a shower running and calls for whoever it may be. She opens the shower curtain and sees the tire. She turns the water off and throws the tire outside. It sits up and rolls back to the room. An onlooker watches it roll inside the room. The boy runs to his dad and says he saw a live tire. He says, ain't you got homework or something? Says he's bugging him and to shut up. He gives him money and says to go get him a pizza. We now see the cleaning lady dead on the floor as the tire watches a turtle documentary. We see Sheila walk past its room. Tire rolls up to the pool to see Sheila swimming, and then she puts her boots on and walks right past it. The kid gets the pizza and heads back to his dad. We see a hitchhiker now walking along the side of the road. He tries to stop the kid, but the kid stops and puts some of the dead bird carcass on his dad's pizza for his double toppings, and he rides off again. The tire rolls into the pool now and sinks to the bottom. The son says he's not feeling good and asks his dad to call the doctor. Dad says he and the rest of them just all ate too fast. Dad asks if any of them know about medicine. Now all the onlookers are feeling sick to their stomach. The handicapped man says they were all poisoned. The turkey was a trap. They won't get away with it. I'm still here. The kid rolls up to room 16 and opens the door. He drops the pizza when he sees the dead house cleaner. Sheila sees the cops fly past the diner she's at. She just pushes the doors down and walks outside to see what's going on. The kids tell Chad about it going into room 16 and it's a lie. Dad tells him to get it out the pool or he's going to be really mad. He sets the tire on the concrete and Chad says it's just an ordinary tire. Kid says maybe it drowned. Dad snaps on him and tells him to, tells him to scram as he keeps blaming the tire. Dad throws the tire now. Chad begins to ask questions about the house cleaner. A watch alarm goes off and he says, Mr. Hughes can leave. It's been six hours. So the onlooker should all be dead now and walks away. All right, go ahead, Mike. All right. So this is the set of scenes where I, I started wondering, what the fuck is this? What is this? Uh, okay. So a former me would have used a certain catchphrase here with a certain cast member. Uh, I am refraining from using that going forward, so I won't, but I'll let you think about what that could have been. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, okay. So all this stuff with the hotel to me doesn't land. Like, I'm not exactly sure what the whole not real is real. That whole thing is, I know we're not quite there yet, but like, that's where we're headed. There's a cup, man. I'm going to tell you, one of the grossest things I've seen in any horror movie is this kid putting that dead bird on pizza. That was yeah. fucking disgusting. It, that, that, made, that made me a little, bleh, like, not going to lie. It had a little bleh, bleh, you know, visceral reaction to it. Not, I'm just being honest. Um, something else. <laughs> so it's, you know, you're kind of looking for stuff to say here because, again, there's a tire in a, in a room watching Jazzercise. There's a tire in a room watching turtle doc or tortoise documentaries. All right, fine. Uh, a tire takes a shower at some point. Uh, th it's a lot, okay. But this girl gets out of the pool and puts on cowboy boots. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Out of all the things in the movie, and I truly mean this. That's the first time I went. All right, I'm done. I can't watch this. Like, who the fuck does that? Nobody. Nobody. Okay? So, this set of scenes to me is very strange. One thing I will say, this is actually a better use of the spectators. Because at least there's some, like, character development. They're, like, going at each other. They're a little bit entertaining as they argue. The whole food poison thing is also pretty entertaining as it happens, as the chain reaction kind of starts to set off like dominoes where like, Oh shit, we're all sick. We're all dying. Like all of that is at least a little bit entertaining, but man, this, the, the kid and the dad, I'll be honest. I had no idea they were father and son. I actually like the kid. Like, I think he's like, you know, like he serves his purpose very well, pretty innocent. 
except for putting a dead bird on a pizza, which makes me think he's the next Michael Myers. But, <laughs> you know, whatever. I I just think this is where the movie goes from, okay, this has an interesting concept to, oh, man, this this is bad. The dialogue's bad. The the uh, By the way, this says that the dialogue is really bad. And maybe it's on purpose. Maybe the cop is bad on purpose. Maybe the guy that works at the hotel was bad on purpose. But man, it's just cringy to listen to. It hurts. It hurts. Uh, but that's all I had. Uh, again, it was really hard to take notes. So what I tried to do was find stuff I found funny, which is the girl putting on cowboy boots after swimming in a pool. That doesn't feel good. Have you ever had your foot in a wet boot? That sucks. It's not good. Also, no more dead bird on pizza. The next movie that has that, I'm turning it off. Imagine if Tippy Hedren had put some dead bird on the pi- uh, on the pizza when we reviewed. Great movie, Nick. <laughs> that's Nico's favorite movie, The Birds. Let's go. I I totally understand the the cowboy boot thing. That that was also weird to me. Um, even even being from Texas, it that was still weird to me. I would never do that. Um, so. I will say that this is probably my least favorite set of scenes um, because it does, it does kind of get a little too weird and spread out. Like there's not like an actual like set plot. Like there's, yeah, yeah, there's just kind of too much going on. Um, I do understand why he had to kill the, uh, maid that goes into the room because she did insult him because when she throws him out she does say you know she says fucking weirdos or something like that and so like I get how he had to kill her for that um, and I I also love the teenager I don't love that he put part of the crow onto the pizza that was weird but then again his dad is kind of an abusive ass hat. <laughs> so I get that as well. The next Michael Myers. Exactly. I mean, yeah. So I get that. I think, I think the teenager, at least he's trying to like get somebody's attention with the whole, you know, there is a tire. It's alive. I do remember the first time I watched this movie, I remember him rolling into the pool and I was like, is that the end of the movie? Like, does he does he drown? Does he die? And then, you know, the movie continues. Uh, and of course I watched it probably, I think it was 2013, the first time I watched it. And so I thought that, but I really, I like how the, the accountant is hands down my favorite character in this whole movie. Because he's just so weird. And the fact that he answers the phone and he's like, yes, master, I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. And then he literally just kills that turkey in his room. And then the maid is like, can I clean your room? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. As if he didn't just like murder a turkey in there. Uh, So I really, I I like him for that. He's, he just kind of cracks me up. Think that that's about it for that um again i hate the hotel owner uh mr hughes he's a complete asshat so okay yeah also i'm glad you hold on i'm glad you mentioned it and because i forgot to this tire fucking dies here (laughs) think think, think about what you just said think about what you just said i know this tire that's that that, that's what i'm saying also, after watching Thanksgiving, I didn't know what the guy was going to do with that turkey in there. I was I was scared. I was very scared. I had a thought cross my mind that I didn't care for. So, gobble, gobble, please. motherfucker. All right. Um, this, uh, you said, Sarah, you said this is your least favorite set of scenes. And honestly, I wish I could say that, but I don't know that I have a favorite set of scenes. It just seems so drawn out to me, like with the, the motel room scenes. When we get the uh, the exercise tape and the this, that, and the other, it just seems like, I don't know, I, th- I think this movie does a lot of it. It really did a lot in the first set, of, in the opening set of scenes, when the tire's just rolling down the, rolling down the road, like, figuring itself out. 
and figuring out its own powers and stuff. And then we get here, it's just it's more of the same, but in a different way. I don't know. It just like I said, the the eighty two minutes really feels so much longer than eighty two minutes to me, and it didn't have to. Um, the turkey being dropped. Honestly, the first thought that came to my mind was, are, am I still watching rubber or is this like a weird, the platform hybrid? Cause they're dropping food for all these people to watch. Now I'm thinking, are these people prisoners and they got to eat what they can? And yes, we find out that they pretty much are. Um, okay. The tire can watch TV. Cool. Homeboy tried to hitchhike a guy on a bicycle. Cool. What? Like, what What? What do you want to do? You stick your thumb out to a pizza boy on a bicycle. What do you think he's going to do? Be like, yeah, man, look, you you ride, I'll walk. I don't know why that irritated me so much. But then the little psychopath started putting some dead bird on a pizza, and I was like, I hate this kid. I hate everything about this. Th- this just made me not want to ever eat pizza again. Um, This set of scenes is chaos to me, honestly, because so much is happening. But at the same time, what the hell is happening? Like, there's so many different moving parts that it's like, wh- what's going on? It's very chaotic to me. But my biggest gripe in this entire movie is what you guys already mentioned. This girl got out of the pool and put some raggedy-ass cowboy boots on. Like, those are not even, like, these are some bedazzled cowboy boots. I'm going to the Cotton Eye Joe. It's a local bar in Knoxville, Tennessee. You'll learn about it one day, Mike. Um, these are some raggedy-ass. I just got off the ranch. I just castrated 14 steer calves, and now I'm putting my boots on after I get out of the pool. What are you doing here? This I don't know why that bothered me so much, because there's so much more to be angry at. But um, I'm ready to go home at this point. <laughs> Bro, those boots are worse than the boots that Jessica Simpson worn. Those, Simpson those, those boots are All not right, made for go. walking. For walking. No. Nope. Especially after you get all your feet all wet and the chlorine and you're rubbing up against it. If those are some real leather boots, boots fuck that. boots are made that. for nothing but Sorry, go blisters ahead. and ranching. <laughs> all right, cut back to the onlookers and they're all laid over dead. As the man in the wheelchair keeps watching, Chad announces to the other cops and tells them they can all relax. It's over. They're all stopping now and great job. What do you mean, another officer asks. Why would you want us to go home? Stop pretending it's real life and go home, Chad says. We're finished. And the officer says, this is real life. We have a dead body. He says, it's not real. You have a toy alligator under your arm. He tells the niece to take her gun and point at him and shoot. Now he tells Doug to do it. Doug shoots Chad. You see, I don't feel a thing. No pain whatsoever. It's not real. You understand everything is fake. He has him shoot again and nothing happens. Now you believe me, he asks. Chad tells him to, to slap the corpse and shake her up. She's dead. The body's cold, she tells him. He asks how cold. The accountant tells Chad one of the spectators didn't eat the turkey, and he's still watching. You have to keep going. Excuse me, please, Chad asks, and forget what he said. Chad walks to Mr. Hughes by the pool and sits by him. We're not quite done, and he asks questions about the cleaner and her death. The tire sits up as the two talk, and he begins to shake. Mr. Hughes' head explodes and rolls away, and Chad is in disbelief. Oh God, the kid was right. The killer was a tire. Chad is in disbelief. The tire rolls on and looks at itself in a piece of a mirror. It recaps his prior events. The kid asks the tire if it killed Martina. He says, you're going to be in trouble and ask if it can talk. It rolls away and he throws a soda can at it. Chad tells the cops they have an hour to find the tire. They ask, what brand? Brand (laughs) Brandless, he says. The kid runs up to them and says he just saw it going up the road and they pursue the accountant pulls up uh, to the man in the wheelchair with a table of food and asks what he might fancy. He tells him he's not hungry, so forget it. He asks, maybe dessert? He offers chocolate, he declares. You're wasting my time. Go away. You got to eat something. It's unhealthy. I just want to watch the end in peace. He asks him what's happening. He hands the accountant the binoculars. We see the tire rolling down the road as a cop car pulls up on it. It turns around and stares down the deputy. He shakes using his power and explodes the driver's head, and the passenger cop is in shock. We see the accountant eating the eclairs now. He tells the man some family stories about smashing his brother's face with a rock. He asks if he has something for stomach aches, and he begins to keel over in pain. That was supposed to be for you to eat as he squirms around in burning pain. The tire keeps rolling on down the road and stops when he sees a big fire, and we see men burning up old tires. And the uh, next set of scenes are the ending. Go ahead, Mike. 
Oh, sorry. I had to click my... Okay. Man, listen. Oh. I want someone to explain this whole not real, real thing to me. Because I know we have spectators that are viewing this like a movie. But we clearly saw the maid die. Saw that. But I'm really... Con- like I'm Honestly, I could just be a big old dum-dum. That's okay. I'm just genuinely confused by the whole, okay, you guys can go home now thing with the cop and it's it's all an act to him and they shoot him and he he doesn't die and he bleeds but like the but the maid died and bled like i i'm very confused and and i'm guessing and this is just a guess the answer is going to be there's no reason well the problem with that is to keep me i need a fucking reason why i'm watching this movie like there is there needs to be something going on that makes sense with a plot narrative and I know, again, the narrative is everything's happening for no reason. Literally, that's why we have a killer tire on the loose. Got it. But man, this this stuff is just, it was hard to make it through. It really, really was. Uh, I will say the scene with the accountant and the guy in the wheelchair had some humor. Um, like you said, the accountant is your favorite character, Sarah. Uh, it's kind of hard to disagree with that just because he actually has a little bit of humor here where he's talking about how he went on vacation as a kid and that made no fucking sense. I got a chuckle out of me. Um, how he ended up knowing there's poison in the food. He ends up eating the fucking food anyway, <laughs> which I found to be slightly humorous. Uh, but the man in the wheelchair to me, again, not necessarily serving a point in my mind. Like I want to know what his deal is and he doesn't really, ah, man, it just, He's just a guy that didn't want to eat because he wanted to see the end of the movie. Okay, that's fine. I guess he is us then. Because we here we go. Well, we have to see the end now. We've already sat through this fucking much. So we need to finally see the end. And I I mean, again, there's some good kills here. I think all the head explosions look good. I want to say that as a positive to this. Like, I don't think any of them look bad. I think all of them look gory. They're cool. The aftermath looks cool. Uh so. The budget, which we're going to go over at the end, I think they did a good job spending it where it needed to be if, if they were going to spend any money at all. So I'll give them a positive there. This was just really hard, especially with the tires burning. I didn't really understand that either. So like, I it was just really hard to keep my attention. Um, I'm not even going to say that it was boring because I was like, what's going on? Like, that fucking four non blonde song. What's going on? Like I, I, I had no fucking, yeah, that's a deep cut right there, brother. Uh, I do too. Great song. Um, but no, I just wish it had, a. I, I just wish this movie had a little bit more of a plot because one thing I would say is the movie can be as silly as it wants to be. I like some silly shit, brother, brothers and sisters. The shit that me and Dustin have sat through in our lifetime while being wrestling fans, we watched Triple H rape a mannequin. Okay, so like at at while playing another character. So again, we've seen some shit. This movie just does not have a plot, and for me to follow it and be silly and over the top, a killer tire, I need a story. And to me, it just didn't have. This is a set of scenes where. I think the premise, the message that he's trying to send kind of falls apart for me uh, because I just don't think it has anything that keeps my my like, oh, okay, I, I kind of see what he's getting at here. Maybe what he's getting at is just what I didn't see. I don't know. But uh, I just didn't think this, this is probably my least favorite set of scenes because I think the whole movie just kind of falls apart. Well, in complete opposite of you, uh, this is actually my favorite set of scenes uh, because So it goes back to Robert's character growth because he actually, in the middle of the scenes, he rolls up to um, a mirror because he is not aware that he's a tire. So he sees that he's a tire in this mirror. So him going to where that fire is and he sees all those tires being burned. It's like his people are dying. And so that makes him even more angry. Um, But if you go back to like the beginning of the scenes, I really enjoy the fact that the accountant goes and tells Chad that 
the people should be dead by now, so it'll be fine. They can, you know, cut it. I like the, I don't know why, but it gives me such joy to have that cop that has the stuffed toy alligator under his arm for no reason, because it just cracks me up. I also enjoy how Chad goes after he realizes, oh, you know, she's actually dead. I should probably like find out what's happening. He goes back and then asshat Mr. Hughes, you know, dies, which makes me quite happy because I hated him to begin with. The teenager comes back and as Robert is realizing he's a tire, the teenager is trying to explain to him, you know, hey, you're like gonna get in trouble. You need to like go figure it out. And then the tire, of course, just rolls away. I think that my favorite part of the scenes is when the accountant tries to go and get uh, the man in the wheelchair to eat a bunch of different foods. And then he's like, all right, if you're not going to eat, I'm just going to like sit and wait for you to get hungry and, you know, talk to you about my life. And then he's just dumb and ends up eating the food. He's like, you know, he's like, are you sure you don't want this eclair? Because like, it's really good. And then he's like, oh, my stomach hurts. He's like, you were supposed to eat this food, not me. And then he dies. And that just cracks me up. I just, I I love it so much. (laughs) That part is funny. I will give you that. I will say that part genuinely made me laugh. So first of all, one of my favorite revelations of this entire episode is that, Sarah, you appear to love the word asshat as much as I do. I call people asshats all the time. And that's an underrated insult. I love that. Okay, I have a question, though. So when you mentioned Robert looking in the mirror, and we get the scene earlier with Robert watching television, where's Robert's eyes? Where are Robert's eyes? Because a tire is constantly rolling here. So with his eyes, if the eyes are attached to the tire, the eyes are going dirt, dirt, dirt. So don't give me this shit where he didn't realize he was a tire. He's been looking at the ground for 30% of his life. Anyway. Well, here's, okay, here's a question, though. Does he actually have then eyes, though? how is he though? watching TV? How's he looking in the mirror? He may just like how's the he sound. In the mirror? Oh, that's fair. <laughs> okay, here's, okay. If he's rolling, maybe his eyes... He's viewing himself like, from go he's with viewing him. himself from third person. Maybe his eyes like roll at the same time that he rolls. So kind of like a level, like that little ball yes. is a level. So when he rolls, they just and stay I can get right there. That if I could ask the question, but anytime I ask a question, I get hit with the no reason. So what the hell am I supposed to do? Well, Robert says <laughs> surprise. So my Mike, you mentioned something. Okay. Well, first of all. That is interesting to me, though. I I didn't even think about that with the mirror scene. That is at least interesting, more interesting than I took it. Uh, how is this an animate object uh, looking in the mirror own. if it doesn't have eyes? If it does have eyes, then how does it not realize it's a mirror because the, the eyes would be rolling along the ground? Anyway, first of all, this set of scenes. Okay, so we get the man in the chair. He's the hero. And anytime I see or anytime I see the man in, man in the chair, I start thinking about Trailer Park Boys and ricky's dad but this is different this is not ray this is a different man in the chair and he's the hero so okay there's hope in the movie now he's gonna be the person that's how i'm feeling he's gonna be the person that like he's the hero and he lives happily ever after and he kills this murderous tire everything's good in the world and then my hopes and dreams are dashed in the final set of scenes which we get to but i agree with what you said mike what hidden message am i missing here when, you know, we get, this isn't real, you know, it's all a ruse, blah, blah, blah. But then go slap the woman in the body bag around, but she's really dead. And the tire is actually the killer. Like, what genius am I missing here? I was so confused about what the message was that they were trying to send because they had to be trying to send a message. Um, But then I just remembered there is no reason. There is no reason. So when I removed myself and I was like, okay, there is no reason. 
No, that doesn't work for me. I need a reason to keep me engaged because this set of scenes completely lost me. I was already lost. Okay. I, the opening set of scenes didn't grab me. The second set of scenes didn't hold me at all. And this set of scenes, I'm like, okay, let's just roll credits here. I, I'm a little, I'm a little done. And then, you know, once we get to where we're going in this final set of scenes, you know, the, when I find out that the man in the chair even serves no purpose, he's just another pawn in Robert's game. What the hell, man? I, this doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me, brother. So I'm, I'm, I'm fr- respectfully, I'm frustrated at this point. <laughs> All right, here's the ending. Three days later, we see dead people in a convenience store in the parking lot all over the place. The cops are baffled. An officer looks inside a window and he sees a tire sitting in a chair watching a NASCAR race. Chad and another cop are playing chess. They get a radio if they found the tire inside of a house watching TV. And what should they do? Chad says they're on the way. They rig up talking mannequins with dynamite on the back of them. Sheila begins to call for the tire on a mic. The tire rolls up to the mannequin and she asks, who wrote this garbage dialogue? Chad says to get out the way. You're ruining everything. Kill me. Come on. I want to die. Chad gives the mic back to Sheila to talk again. The man in the wheelchair knocks and tells him this scene makes no sense. And he asks, what's the point of the dummy? Chad says it's a lure. Why don't you just ice the bloody tire? He tells me to get a flamethrower. Do something. The cop up front of the van says they wouldn't be here if you ate the damn turkey. Chad says, we'll try and speed it up and go back to your place. You're nothing but a rubber shit, she says over and over. Tyre uses his power on the mannequin now and explodes its head. It rolls back into the house now. Chad runs towards the house. The man in the wheelchair calls him out on blowing the dummy up as Chad shoots it with a shotgun and throws the tire at him. He says it's not over. It's been reincarnated as a tricycle. He tells it he, he's not a character, just an observer, and the tricycle explodes the man. The tricycle rolls away. The van stops beside Sheila's car and they let her out. She gets in her car and she sees the tricycle pull up beside her, but it keeps going down the road to a groovy tune. Several tires sit up as the tricycle rolls past them and roll with it. Title card and back to rolling through the streets. The trike has made it to an interstate now. The trike and a platoon of tires stop as they see the Hollywood sign and the film ends and end credits roll. Mike, what do you think about the ending? (laughs) <sighs> man you did a good job in your scene by scene of covering up the house she's like she just call, keeps calling him a rubber shit because boy there was a whole lot of bullshit dialogue in that holy moly okay <clears throat> dustin you said something in your last set of scenes that i really wanted to touch on here that irked me to no end this wheelchair guy lives the entire time as the only spectator left watching this quote-unquote film Then he ends up serving absolutely zero purpose in the final ending narrative. I don't understand. I don't understand. It'd be different. Like, man, this had me like Halloween five Tina levels of angry. Like that's how like frustrated I was. I was like, oh, okay. At least we'll have some kind of something woven throughout the whole movie. No, just head explodes by a fucking tricycle, which I'll get to. I'll save that. But, this whole thing with the dummy, uh, it's it's funny, uh, especially when the especially when the sheriff guy tries to get on and and do it. I think that's some actual genuine humor because he he calls it a slutter or a, I'm a slutter or whatever. Like some of that stuff's pretty funny, but I just am I missing something? Like what was like? I'm sure Sarah will explain because she's definitely as far as this movie goes the smartest Absolutely. one in the room here, the virtual room that we have. Yeah, so. But, like, am I missing something? Because, like, Tyre dies, or after he blows that wheelchair guy, which was a good, by the way, cool kill. Probably the best kill in the movie, in my opinion, which I'm spoiling. But uh, after that, the Tyre dies. How does the Tyre come back as a fucking tricycle? How? Make it make no sense reason. to me. I don't understand. No but, now, one thing I will say. You could have just ended the movie right there and been okay because everything that happens after that is completely unnecessary. Like, yeah, she gets to live. That's cool. But like, and I I will say, 
rolling up to the Hollywood sign with a bunch of tires and a tricycle. Kind of a cool, funny shot. But, like, come on, man. Like, the groovy tune that Nico mentioned, very groovy. I completely agree. The, the music in this film is a big thumbs up, hands down. Probably the best part of the movie. But, man, I don't understand what I'm looking at, I guess. And so, the, again, you have a cool kill in here. You got some funny, humorous dialogue because as bad as it's been, at least in this set of scenes, it kind of plays for laughs, which I think is good. Um, but, man, I just don't get it. I don't get why we now we went from having a killer tire to a killer tricycle. Is this a fine? Is this another transformation? Is he going into his final form? I'm so confused as to what's going on here. But uh, sorry to everyone that does like this movie because, hey, I'll be honest, as we're looking on IMDb, brothers, we met. Sarah's in the majority here. We're we're, we're lagging up the rear. We it's got five point seven out of ten. That's higher than that's higher than some of the other movies we reviewed for sure. So I just don't think they stuck the landing. I don't get it. Um, not for me, you know. And I tried to p- point out some positives, but man, this ending felt like it went on forever. So uh, yeah, that's all I had. It just didn't stick for me. I will say that the end scenes are a bit long and I'll get into that. I am one of those people that I understand the funniness of the dialogue in the van trying to talk to the tire and everything. I get that, but it just seems very cringy to me, which makes me not like it as much as uh, the rest of the movie for me. But I will say that I love how the man in the wheelchair does die. I think that's great because it's not just his head. It's like the whole wheelchair and everything just like explodes. Um, oh, that's a great kill. Yeah, and I think, I, I think that when he went from being a tire into being the tricycle, which of course they don't explain why no reason. I think it actually made him, it made him stronger. I really, I think, think and I tried to research it but I couldn't find anything on it but I think that the reason they chose a tricycle was just as like a kind of a thumbs up to like the shining um and so I think that's why they did it but I'm not entirely sure but I will say that I liked that she lives at the end because she was in it for you know, basically the entire time. The whole scene where him and he's basically like, I choose to believe that he is bringing these other tires to life. Um, They don't really say it, but I believe that he's actually bringing them to life. And I like that, but I do think that they could have cut it down like, by four or five minutes because that last scene really does feel like it stretches for so long and it's so unnecessary because you see him turning a corner and then turning another corner and then going down this long stretch of road and so I I do think they could have cut that down but I do like how he did arrive with the Hollywood sign so so that he could continue killing in LA and I like that. <laughs> so the the mannequin on the porch that that kind of was funny to me. Like I the dialogue was it was so bad that it was funny. And I I think that it was intentionally done that way. The dialogue the rest of the movie that was bad was like I think was done with a serious attempt. But here it was intentionally funny and I appreciate that cuz even she was like who wrote this shit? And she's like, Ugh, I'm I'm a slut for you, or whatever she said. I laughed. That was the that was my favorite part of the movie from a comedic standpoint. Um, yeah, there's some like self hate in this in this set of scenes, Dustin, where they're like, this scene doesn't make any yeah, sense. I'm like, yeah, you're right, it fucking doesn't. But um, again, I mentioned the last set of scenes, the man in the chair. I'm I'm with him. Okay, here's our hero, and I'm with him again here. Let's expedite this shit. Let's get a flamethrower. Let's get a rocket launcher. Let's speed this up. Let's get some action in here. But instead, they're just like, no, let us handle it. And we're just going to 
talk shit to this tired, poses a mannequin with a voice box around her throat. Yeah. Okay. And then what do you what do you mean we wouldn't be here if you just ate the, per- ate the turkey? What's the point here? The tire is still a killer. That wasn't planned. So, you know, when he told him, you know, we wouldn't even be here if you ate a turkey, that doesn't solve your problem because I don't, you know, the killer, the tire being the killer is still an unsolved mystery to me. I don't know. Maybe I missed something, but that doesn't, that's the, that doesn't make sense to me. Okay. He goes inside the trailer. He shoots the tire. He brings out the flap of the tire and throws it in the man in the chair's lap. That is not the same tire. If you pay attention, the thread pattern was not the same. That's a goof. I read that. That is not the same thread pattern. Um, so you clearly didn't kill Robert. You killed some other poor innocent tire. Um, but then when, quote unquote, Robert rolls outside and he's a tricycle. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. You didn't explain how the tire got these powers. And now you don't even explain. It. Like, I get it. No reason. There's no reason. But the no reason is transforming into a tricycle now. And I like your explanation, Sarah. I, I, I can I can kind of appreciate that. Like, if you want to pay homage to a, uh, a, a horror film legend and one of the greats of all time, The Shining, if you want to throw that out there, okay. But I'm not so sure that they got that. I don't, I'm not sure that's what they're going for. I think this is just like, hey, what else could we do to make no absolute no sense at all let's do a tricycle i'm done but then when the tricycle's rolling down the road and we got all these tires rising up before him now i'm even more confused because what the hell so all these tires are possessed are you telling me that every tire is possessed every tire has the ability to just come alive and start killing people with an orgasm i don't like it you know like i said this just it even frustrated me even more because are you trying to tell me that every tire has the ability to just all of a sudden become self-aware and sentient and just rise up and kill people with an orgasm? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, botched landing. That you know, this this is one of those like when you're coming off the diving board, you kind of slipped and fell and hit your head, and then when you're trying to stick the landing, you belly flopped. That's what this movie did to me. All right, any more huh. closing thoughts on the scene by scene before we jump into comments and questions on social media? No, I think I'm good. All right, uh, we'll, we'll do Facebook first. And Sarah, I'm sorry, but the comments weren't very nice. Some of them were even from your husband. Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that doesn't shock me. I hope you All have right. a couch in your house. Matt Sears on, on Facebook said. He just asked, does Sarah hate you guys? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Michelle Merza, she she tweeted us saying, I've never heard of this movie, but apparently I'm not missing anything with the laughing emoji. And Sean replied that it exists, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> then on Twitter, we just got a bunch of GIF replies. But then Sean asked, could this movie actually be a work of genius? Maybe to some you know- people. Sure. I guess you it know, could be. It could be. It could be. Here's my retort to that. The great prophet Kanye West had a quote in one of his songs that said, name one genius that ain't crazy. Boom. This movie proves that point. Because whoever wrote this was either crazy or tripping acid. I'm not sure which one, but this could be genius if you look at it through that lens. Fair enough. I almost uh, wish this movie was a little more silly. A little more silly, because I feel like if it was a little more silly... I, I I may be on the more favorable side of it. If this movie was a little bit more t- uh, Sharknado, a little bit more Thanksgiving, I think I would have enjoyed it yeah. more. Yeah, my groove. Sharknado is so You terrible. wait till I pick it. <laughs> no. no let's man, let's, I, not, I don't let's feel not, good not throw around the world. Let's, <laughs> wait, not, throw around, let's not throw around the world. That's sci-fi, terrible. right? Come on. That could fit in this month. I need to change my pick. No. Go ahead. Let's not let's not do that. Nico, right. please go. All right, let's jump into our favorite part of the show. Um favorite kill, least favorite kill in the rating. Sarah, this is your legendary blood donor pick. Do you want to go first, last? I can go first, that's fine. It's your pick. Okay, so I actually have two favorite kills, and the reason why is because I wanted to choose one that was 
a kill from Robert and then one that wasn't. So my favorite kill from Robert was the man in the wheelchair because, I mean, he lasted basically the entire movie and then, you know, it was a whole explosion, not just his head. And then my other favorite kill was the accountant because he was so dumb that he ate the food that he poisoned himself. That was stupid. I would say for least favorite kill, I would just have to go with the clump of people um, that were like outside. And then that person that was like in the uh, supermarket gas station, something like that, because we didn't really get to see what happened there they're just kind of there all right y'all gonna hate me so <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I i thought about it really hard because i told sean that i was gonna give it a straight 10 because of how much i love this movie but because of that last long scene of him like rolling down the road forever and ever and ever I have put it down to a 9.5. <laughs> oh, man. She's bringing that average up. Ooh, okay. I respect it. Everybody's got a favorite. I respect it. All right. So let me let me read Brian's. Since since Brian, yeah. you know, shout out to Brian. He he works so hard for this podcast. He's never missed a single episode. It's the first this one the he's first missed. One. So first let, one let me ever. read his thoughts. And um, he he wanted me to reiterate that this is nothing personal. Um, he says, and I quote, I give every movie we review on here a fair shake. Even movies I don't like or care for, I honestly try to at least point out some positives in them. I really do appreciate the support we receive from the Irvins, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there. My review of any movie is not indicative of that. I can promise you that. However, I can honestly say, without question, this is the worst movie I've ever attempted to watch. To quote the principal from Billy Madison in a roundabout way, this is the most insanely idiotic thing I have ever seen. At no point in this rambling, incoherent movie was there anything that could even come close to be considered as a rational thought. I truly feel dumber for having watched it. I award this movie no points, and may God have mercy on all of our souls. His least favorite kill Jesus, bro. was all the spectators, every single one of them, I guess. His favorite kill was the wheelchair guy, oh. and he rated it a zero. Whew. Tough out here. Okay, this is the first zero, correct? Yes. yes. It's, it's not the it's, Yes. That it's was the first okay. Of... I will say that was one of my goals. Oh, you just wait. Was to get somebody. <laughs> That's not the last zero. of the first on this episode. I promise you that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh okay, I'll get I'll go, then Nico can go, then yep. Justin can finish out. Let's do it. Okay. That's uh bad. my uh <laughs> well, okay. For one thing I wanted to say, this movie was made for a cool eight hundred thousand dollars and it made about six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> so you know. Okay, that's all I'll say. Um, okay. So <sighs> I've said all the positives I have. Cinematography, the way it's shot, the the music is good. There's a couple of cool kills and a few laughs. Outside of that, I'm just going to be straight up honest. This is one of the least favorite things like I've ever watched. Um, I don't want to say it's one of the worst movies ever because that's subjective, but I got to say this is one of the most the least enjoyable film experiences I've had in quite some time. <laughs> I think since I walked out of the theater while watching Bruno, I'll be honest. Um, Bruno, <laughs> we don't talk. Yeah, yeah, that 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 Bruno with Sasha Baron Cohen. Um, Elite. so yeah, my my favorite kill is the wheelchair guy, but I'm gonna disagree with Brian. I actually really like the spectator kills. I think that those those are done pretty funny. I don't really have a least favorite kill because uh, they're all kind of head explosions, and I think they all look pretty cool. Um, so I don't really have a least favorite kill, and none of them are you know just terrible. Um, so. Look, I gave it the good. I still, it's not for me. It's not my cup of tea. So I'm just going to come out and say, uh, I gave this movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. 
Thank you so much for your contribution, but I gave this movie a negative 2.5. <laughs> a negative score, wow. I couldn't rate it higher than Thanks Killing because at least I laughed during Thanks Killing. I'm sorry. All right, I'll I'm go sorry. Next. I love the difference in like just that's how movies are. I love it. All right, I'll go next. Favorite kill. I chose the cop with the head explosion with the cop passenger and the, the cop passenger. Just I thought it was kind of a good scene. Uh, my least favorite kill. I chose the accountant just because he got food poisoning and just killed over. It's like, what a fucking dumbass. I mean, you know you poisoned it. But anywho, uh, rating, uh, I just wrote a little short paragraph. Plain and simple. I don't think this is a good movie. It was a little better on my second watch, but still not very good. Uh, I get what the director was going for, but it still stinks. Opening monologue from Chip. I really like the. I really do like the opening monologue. The effects look good. The music is good, and I think it's shot well. But I just wrote the movie is so ridiculous and pointless. I gave it the same score as Thanks Killing, uh, one point five. I would watch Thanks Killing over it just because it's funny. But this movie is way better made, and it's ridiculous to say this, but it's better acted than Thanks Thanks Killing. Oh yeah, the worst I, acting I don't I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely, hundred percent. But at least Thanks to Killing quote, is funny. To quote the great movie The Ringer, yeah. I've seen better acting in pornos. So when it comes to this movie, God damn it! When it comes to this, movie, I've seen better. Act- There's better acting in this movie than there is when Johnny Knoxville tries to act. Anyway, I think that this is also a first, where my least favorite kill and my favorite kill are one and the same. This is the man in the chair. The visual effects of the death that was awesome. Like his whole damn chair, like he blew up. Like not just his head, he blew up. But also, it pissed me off so much because he was my hope that there was going to be some payoff to this ridiculous shit. And then he died. So I hated it. So he's my least favorite and my favorite kill. Man in the chair. When it comes to the movie, though, I... Listen, I can name you movies that are just terrible. Um, No Holds Barred. Starring Hulk Hogan. Terrible movie. Napoleon Dynamite. Shh. Don't you dare defend it. This is my time. I have the floor. Terrible movie. I didn't make it through that movie for years. I tried and I hate that we movie. We agree. Bad movie. This one takes the ca- Terrifier. Terrible. I hated that movie. You know how much I hated that movie. Because not like I thought it had so much potential. But there was just no plot. It was just violence and gore for the sake of violence and gore. Thanks Killing was bad, but it was supposed to be like it it made fun of itself as it's making a movie it's like haha look at us and it has some funny dialogue this movie is just flat out bad i jokingly and i know that sean read you this or showed you this i tweeted my resignation from this podcast because of this movie <laughs> i said and i quote that I'm getting rid of all of my televisions, canceling my internet, and downgrading my phone to a Nokia flip phone because I never want to watch another movie the rest of my life because of this movie. So, it is with a heavy heart and the utmost respect in the world that I tell you that I gave this movie a negative three. And uh, I'm sorry that I had to do that because, I, you know... You're so nice, and I like you and Sean. Yeah, you've so been a good much. guest. Really you've been, good. You've guest. been a great guest. You, I like you and Sean so much, but damn, this movie's bad. So um, <laughs> that gives us a composite <laughs> score of a, a one point one. <laughs> Even your nine point five can save it. That's hilarious. Oh man, no. Wow. Hey, I, I just want to say. Thanks for coming on and thanks for picking it. You've been a great guest. I mean, no, uh, no doubt about it. I just didn't care for the film. That's n- no, it's nothing personal ever with these movies, except for the, except for when Nico makes bad picks. It's always personal. That is true. Man of Eric Blair Witch Project. Uh, anywho, I uh, did it because it's a cultural film phenomena. Come on, bro, and it's good. Still, still picked it. Yeah, but I didn't. I gave it like a. Dude, I gave it a three point five. I wasn't a part of this mo- this podcast at that point in time, but I would have brought that average up a full two points. I promise you that. That movie stinks. Anyway, stink, brother. Sorry, go ahead, Nico. Snooze fest. Anywho, um, y'all got any more final thoughts on uh, on rubber before we shout out our blood donors? 
All right, let's shout out our blood donors. Uh, our camper level reoccurring are Clayton J, Nina Michelle Mirza, Andrew Ferguson, Carrie Adams, the Horror Movie Crew Podcast, Alex Seligson, Eric Doolittle, and Sean Irwin. Our camp counselor reoccurring are Hunter Nelson, Dennis Kennedy, Edwin Hernandez Gunn, Joe Swinford, Jennifer Davis from the Too Close to Home Podcast, Karen and Heather Smith. Our legendary blood donors are Sean and Sarah Irwin. Thank you all very much. And our new Dream Warrior donor is David Farley. Just want to thank all of our blood donors. We really do appreciate y'all so much. Takes a big burden off of us to produce this podcast Absolutely. and our YouTube videos. And I'll just reiterate, it's a very tough time economically for a lot of families, a lot of people. So any financial support is greatly appreciated. Uh, Sarah, I'm just going to echo Dustin and uh, Mike. Uh, you did a great job tonight, honestly. Absolutely. And you, you did your film justice and, Yes, I'm glad you didn't, you know, take nothing personal with the movie. Stood, the, stood in the paint for your movie. Got to appreciate it always. Absolutely, you and no joke, you did a, a very good job tonight. Uh, yes, you fit right in with us reviewing movies. Uh, thank you to all of our blood donors, all of our listeners. Really appreciate y'all, and y'all have a good one. Just want to remind everybody. Oh.